The course files area is the location where you can upload and organize all your course files. And these could be anything from lectures, PowerPoints, Word documents, spreadsheets, you name it, images, even video clips and audio clips. These files can then be accessed from anywhere within the course. Canvas basically has three different files areas that you want to be aware of. You have the course files area where you would store all your course files. But then you also have a group file area that would be under people. So if we were to go under inside of one of your groups, and I just have a, a test group here, you will see that now you're inside of a group and that has a files area too. And then finally there is your personal files area too, which you would go to by clicking on the global navigation settings or profile. And as you can see, this file area is different. It has just your personal files. And here you can see just the course files when I'm back into the course. And as with the modules, uh, what you want to do is make sure you organize the files of your course. You know, you could do it by week or by topic, but that way it's easily organized and easily to find and also easy to move over when you move to a different course when, when your course gets copied over. Then you have everything in the same place each time. At the bottom here of your left pane where the folders are listed, you'll see how much storage is used. So typically your institution is probably going to let you have 250 megabytes and maybe uh, 500 megabytes, but there will probably be a limit as to how much uh, you can use. And if you need to check your quota in another space, that would be under settings. And then under course details where you would see how much uh, storage you're allowed. But as you can see in this example course, uh, I've only used half of a megabyte out of 250 megabytes. So when you're uploading big files, make sure you use file optimization. You may want to downsize some of those images or use a smaller file format for some of the files you're using. You can also see the files for all the courses that you're in or teaching. And then if you have multiple courses, you could uh, easily organize your files this way. So how does it work? Well, basically, you can add files using this Add File, Add Folder toolbar here on the uh, upper right corner. And so let's go and add a couple of files. Click on Add File. And you should now see a pop-up window. So if I wanted to add a file, I could click on that one file. Or I could alternatively add several files by holding the Shift button or dragging a rectangle around several files and then click on Save. And now you should see that several files have been uploaded. If you wanted to add a new folder, say a Week 1 folder, simply click on Add Folder and then type in the uh, folder title and click Enter. And now you have a new folder. Canvas currently uh, organizes all the files and folder names by alphabetic order. At the time of this video, I haven't seen any changes to that yet. So if you wanted to organize it in a different way rather than alphabetically, you could put uh, numbers in front of the file names and then it would order them from low number to high number. But for now, everything in Canvas is alphabetically ordered in the file manager. If you have a lot of files to upload, say more than 50 files, uh, then you could do the zip option where you upload a zip file. You would then select this last icon here called uh, import a zip file. And then you select browse and then select the zip folder and click open and then upload. And you could also select the location where you want to unzip these files into. Canvas allows you to preview documents simply by clicking on most Word type of documents. Uh, so a lot of these things can be previewed, such as PowerPoints, uh, Excel spreadsheets, Word documents, uh, Open Office documents, text documents. But not everything uh, will be will have this preview window to the right. But once you preview something, you can use various views, like a book view, where you see the whole page in one view. You can then to see it in full screen. You can print it from here and you can search within the document, assuming it's not an image. 
So let's say you would like to rearrange some documents. I've got nothing in this folder right now. So what you can do is click on the uh, parent test course, the top level basically. And then what you can do is drag an item by using the uh, putting your mouse on the icon, not on this on the file name, but rather on the icon. So it turns into this four arrow icon and then you can drag it into a folder and you just have to be aware that you can't drag from the left pane into the right pane. You can only drag from the right pane into the left pane. Renaming files is fairly easy too. You click on the pencil icon, simply rename it and click the enter button. To delete a file, click on the delete this file icon to the right of the file you want to delete and then you get a little dialog box that asks you to if you want to be sure you want to delete this file click OK and it's now deleted. If you wish to download an entire folder you can do so by clicking on the folder you wish to download and then click on the download files in this folder as a zip file. So then you have a zip file with all the files within that folder in one file which you can then unzip later. And note that you can also rename and delete the folders as well. So I can change this readings folder to readings for week one. If you ever need the folder link so that you can send a link to a specific folder within your course directly to students, what you would do is click on the folder that you wish to uh, grab the link from and then grab it out of your address bar in your browser. Right clicking and then clicking copy and then you can paste it somewhere else. And then the student would only see the folders that were visible to students. By default, all files are open to all students, TAs, and teachers in a course. Now, if you wanted to lock down a file to the students, what you would do is click on the padlock icon to the right of the file or the folder. For example, you could lock a folder as well. So let's say you wanted to lock this folder down until a certain date passes. I click on lock this folder and then I can say lock until I manually unlock it or I can uncheck this and then type in a date and it's pretty date specific so you have to write in like June 1st 2013 and then you can lock it also after a certain date so you could lock it after July 2nd 2013 and then you would click on lock this folder and then once something is locked, you'll see the padlock icon on top of the folder icon. Now if you want to hide a file from students in the file manager, so let's say you have all the files available for students to see, but you don't want them to see a particular file on, unless you link to it from within uh, the course module, say, then what you want to do is click on the lock icon next to the file name you want to hide and then you click this checkbox that says let students download or view the file if I link to it just don't show it in the file listings for students and that way you can link to it and the students can access it but it's so it's not locked but at the same time they can't navigate to it by looking at the file directory of your course so in that case you would click on this checkbox and as soon as you click on it the the next checkbox which allows you to manually lock it and unlock an item will then disappear and then click on lock this file 